Hey guys, welcome to the next channel. IO control is one of the most interesting and uh, important APIs when it comes about uh, communication uh, between your uh, uh, kernel space and user space. Uh, uh, you know, kernel modules or uh, kernel device drivers. So, so far I have discussed in three episodes uh, about, uh, in the first episode I have discussed uh, a sample uh, uh, a case like if config where uh, you know IO control is used uh, to set and get uh, the configuration of your device ports because this is a real world example where we can uh, see uh, really it is how it is getting used. In the next episode I have discussed about the kernel part of the same. So in case if you haven't watched I strictly recommend you to watch all the three episodes and then you can watch uh, 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 this video as well because although in this video I'm going to discuss about some uh, generic components like uh, copy from user and copy to user I still going to discuss these two APIs uh, in relationship with IO control API so I recommend you to watch my earlier episode so that you can get that uh, you know full picture so you can go to the video index you can see here in the first episode I have discussed about uh, uh, a sample uh, like if config uh, uh, command source uh, the if config is a part of uh, net tools uh, uh, stack so you can see here in various instances uh, they use io control so that uh, they can push the configuration anytime anything you do with if config they can push from user space to the kernel space and in the second episode i have discussed the kernel part of the same so you can see here the kernel part of the same corresponds to dev uh, net core uh, dev io control uh, dot c so you can see here uh, this is the kernel uh, side of the same so with this uh, we are done with the real world use cases in the third episode i have picked a source uh, where i found in uh, a website called open source for you so this is the source and then i have done uh, some minor uh, modifications and uh, I have even published my own modified source with the makefile and stuff like that. So you can see here as a part of kernel side you have this uh, copy from user and copy to user and you can see the same APIs even in the kernel uh, part of netcore device uh, iocontrol.c as well. So if you go here somewhere you can find those APIs as well. So essentially yeah uh, you can uh, see here I'm sorry to interrupt. You can see here copy from user and you can uh, go through down the line you can find it in many cases uh, they use the same so essentially it is interesting to note that uh, the platforms like this uh, whether it is proc file system or sockets or any such platforms essentially uh, it is used uh, or it is uh, been implemented with you know fundamental apis like these apis so the interesting thing is uh, if you do a mem copy, uh, mem copy works uh, if you do anything uh, like copying from uh, source to destination within the same uh, process in user space. Uh, whereas if you want to copy from one uh, application to other application or uh, one process to other process, you can't do with the mem copy. And this is the way, uh, and this is the reason we need IPC mechanism because you cannot do that uh, from one virtual uh, memory space to other virtual memory space. So this is what I have depicted in this architectural diagram. So hope you know earlier I used to have that uh, whiteboard and then I used to draw in the same since I can't do that uh, in my desk I thought let me do this architectural uh, these architectural diagrams in uh, Google draw so you can find the same so what I did is I did uh, these two architectural diagrams which I can uh, discuss in this video and uh, I have also published the same so that you can refer in case if you uh, uh, are interested uh, you know digging down uh, in the context of this copy from user and copy to user so if you see here uh, you can't do a simple mem copy from one process to the other process so that is what i have depicted because you have that uh, imaginary bubble or universe of uh, virtual uh, memory space so you can't do that from one virtual memory space to the other virtual memory space uh, directly in your user space applications and this is the reason you need something like ipc so that you can pass this data to the kernel space and then the kernel space uh, data can be forwarded to the other uh, user space process which essentially means you know uh, 
the process has these restrictions the user space process has these restrictions you can't do copy from anywhere to anywhere versus the kernel can do copying from anywhere to anywhere so essentially your uh, virtual memory space is a sort of as you understand about uh, uh, the memory architecture and stuff like that it is a sort of virtually created memory space it is not something physically exists whereas the kernel can access any world it is what is creating that virtualized memory space that bubble it's the kernel which is creating it and also kernel has that hold of the real physical memory or your you know ram so kernel can act uh, as a sort of intermediary for all these things so so this is what essentially i depicted so if you see here uh, you need to use some ipc to communicate from this process to the other process so in any cases uh, these kind of uh, IPC platforms uh, may use underlying uh, APIs. One such, uh, I mean, couple of such APIs are like you know, copy from user and copy to user. So essentially, what happens is these two APIs uh, you use it in the kernel space, and then uh, it gets uh, data from uh, user space into the kernel space or kernel space into the user space. So that is why I have depicted another picture where. If you see these two APIs, the arguments, everything looks similar to a simple mem copy. In the mem copy, you have the destination source and number of bytes, and uh, essentially what you do is whatever you provide in the source uh, buffer, it is copying to the destination buffer. But provided both the buffers are exiting in the same memory space, so that is what is the mem copy is doing. So it should be called within the user's process, and uh, it should be in the same address space. Whereas if you see here, copy to user and copy from user, this is quite unique because it is hopping from one address space to the other address space. So if you see the sample code, somewhat like this. So if you see here, copy to user, and if you see here, it is say it says that copy to user, which means from kernel space to the you know user space. So in that way, you can see here, uh, you can see here uh, the destination is. Uh, user space uh, context which is that arg and you can see here uh, you know query arg of q some data structure defined in the kernel space you know you can see here it is defined in the kernel space and it is populated here and this is your source pointer or buffer you are copying from uh, you know kernel space to the user space and you are defining the number of you know bytes the size of that data type whereas in the case of you know copy from user you can see here the source is uh, you know arg which is the user space context and the destination is this q which is the pointer of you know uh, defined in the kernel space so this is what it is so essentially this is what uh, uh, copy from user and copy to user it switches the data between two worlds altogether so from uh, you know kernel space to the user space and user space to the kernel space so that's the unique thing about the same so these two apis uh, are fascinating uh, i thought uh, let me uh, do an individual video completely an individual video and i discuss the same then later i thought uh, uh, since they are very interesting and also somewhere it uh, it is good to discuss within that same io control uh, uh, video series because uh, you know uh, uh, since anyway we are discussing in depth about io control we can go uh, to the we can go through the same flow and then we can also discuss these two apis as well if i take a complete individual uh, uh, video what happens is uh, i need to give various other examples and also we may be out of little bit of context so it is quite interesting to discuss these two apis within the same series i thought let me just do the same as a part of the same series so what i did is uh, i have created this uh, that is the reason uh, i have created this placeholder as you can see here this is the video whatever i'm talking once it is edited and published i'm going to publish over here so this will get populated currently it has no uh, you know uh, the url doesn't have any video index so that is why it is showing a blank screen and then uh, followed by which i have put all the references so if you go uh, to the kernel side you can find uh, uh, the implementation of the same in uh, include linux u access dot h and uh, you can find there is some amount of documentation and uh, let me just scroll the down uh, let me just uh, scroll it down uh, yeah you can see here uh, you can find a little bit of uh, uh, documentation and then uh, followed by which uh, you can find also 
uh, these APIs and then uh, uh, the copy from user or copy to user have another wrapper APIs you can see here after it does some amount of pre-request sites it checks the same and then it has this wrapper APIs you can see here from do and it has this and if you go inside you can also find uh, some uh, uh, you know platform dependent code further down below so that uh, eventually may lead to memory management modules and stuff like that i don't have still an idea because i have not gone uh, in depth of those uh, you know uh, apis but generally i have done long back of course uh, not now but uh, somewhere it anyway eventually points to memory management and essentially you can understand that anytime it does this you know switching between this virtual memory space to the physical memory space or kernel's memory space it has to do that mapping of data of course so, i mean mapping of your memory so obviously it has to do that so that is what essentially it happens so in case if you are curious you can further dig down you can see here raw copy from user raw copy to user and then you can further dig down these apis so you can see here it points to uh, include asm u access.h and uh, it has various uh, places which means this itself says that it's a kernel uh, uh, kernel's hardware or platform dependent code so you can see here it is occurring many times and if you see here with respect to 64 bits and with respect to 34 uh, 32 bits of x86 also it has that implementation so you can see here uh, uh, raw copy from user and in this case uh, raw uh, copy from user this is uh, i believe this is uh, yeah u access 32 bit include asm it is an arch x86 so this path itself says that it is an ar architecture uh, uh, dependent code so this is what it is so it is quite interesting uh, although i am not that interested to go in depth because uh, something uh, uh, when it comes related to memory management it is not an area which i generally much interested and keen about so this that's just about me so that's what it is so coming back to this picture uh, that is what essentially i uh, mapped over here uh, so you, traditionally you can't uh, do any sort of simple mem copies between one process to other process uh, and it is uh, uh, something if you do it is actually wrong it is never going to work and this is the reason you need some ipc it can be any ipc like sockets message queues pipes and stuff like that it can be any ipc uh, the thing is so uh, even if it is a context between uh, communicating between uh, two processes or uh, something like io control there is some amount of data movement from uh, user space to the kernel space or kernel space to the user space this is what essentially is happening so that is why i have represented as a kind of big picture in this way but if you see in our video uh, context i should have done only this part because this is what is this example corresponds you have one user space application and you have one kernel module and then you have a common header file uh, between the both assets so you just need to have something like this but in a way to explain that big picture i have put this picture so that it is lot more generic this picture is not strictly about io control or something like that it's a sort of generic uh, architectural uh, picture to explain that something like mem copy you can't do that and uh, if you do any ipc mechanisms uh, somewhere down the lane you have this copy from user and copy to user and that you know points to APIs like raw copy from user, raw copy to user and stuff like that as we just seen over here. So that's all guys for this episode, hope you guys loved watching this video. In case if you want to reach me or if you have any questions, send me an email. Thank you once again for watching this video. Stay tuned. Have a nice day. Bye bye.